Southwest Airlines, a name synonymous with budget-friendly travel and friendly skies, always putting passengers first. Founded in 1967, Southwest revolutionized air travel with its no-frills approach, making flying accessible. The airline soared high, winning over passengers with its low fares and unique customer-centric culture. But even giants face headwinds and challenges. Enter Elliott Management, an activist investor known for shaking things up in the corporate world. In 2019, Elliott set its sights on Southwest, acquiring a significant stake in the company. Their goal? To push for changes that would, in their view, unlock greater shareholder value. This marks the beginning of a tense standoff, a battle for the very soul of Southwest Airlines. Elliott, with its history of aggressive tactics, wasted no time in making its presence felt strongly. They publicly questioned Southwest's strategy and leadership, calling for a major shake-up at the top. Southwest, initially resistant, found itself facing a truly formidable opponent. The airline industry watched with bated breath, wondering how this clash of titans would ultimately unfold. This wasn't just about balance sheets and profit margins alone. It was about the heart and soul of Southwest Airlines. Would it stay true to its roots or be forced to change course dramatically? Elliott Management, often described as a vulture fund, thrives on shaking up corporations. Their modus operandi is to swoop in, identify weaknesses and exploit them for profit. Founded by Paul Singer, a billionaire known for his sharp elbows and even sharper investment strategies, Elliott has a reputation for playing hardball. Singer's approach is not for the faint-hearted. He is known for his relentless pursuit of corporate change, often leaving a trail of transformation in his wake. Their playbook is clear, acquire a stake, agitate for change, and profit from the resulting stock movements. This strategy has made them both feared and respected in the corporate world. Southwest, accustomed to charting its own course, found itself in uncharted territory. The airline, known for its unique business model and customer-friendly policies, was suddenly under the microscope. Elliott's arrival sent shockwaves through the company. The leadership team, which had long prided itself on its independence, now faced an external force demanding change. Employees worried about their jobs. Investors held their breath. The uncertainty was palpable and the stakes were high. The airline industry buzzed with speculation. Analysts and competitors alike watched closely, wondering how this high-stakes drama would unfold. Elliot, true to form, didn't mince words. They laid out their demands with precision and clarity, leaving no room for ambiguity. They criticized Southwest's operational efficiency, its root network, and its shareholder returns. According to Elliot, there was significant room for improvement. They demanded changes, pushing for a more aggressive approach to cost cutting and a greater focus on shareholder value. This was a direct challenge to Southwest's existing strategies and philosophies. Southwest, facing mounting pressure, found itself at a crossroads. The decisions made in the coming months would shape the future of the airline. The clash between Elliott and Southwest wasn't just a boardroom battle. It was a clash of cultures. Elliott's profit-driven approach was at odds with Southwest's people-first philosophy. Southwest, known for its employee-centric approach, now faced an adversary that prioritized shareholder returns above all else. This fundamental difference in values created a tense and challenging environment. How do you think Southwest's unique company culture often cited as a key to its success, factored into this conflict with Elliott Management. The answer to this question could determine the airline's path forward, balancing the needs of its employees with the demands of its investors. 
Faced with Elliot's relentless pressure, Southwest Airlines began to make concessions. The airline, which had long prided itself on its independence and unique corporate culture, found itself at a crossroads. Elliot Management, a formidable activist investor, was not known for backing down easily. Their demands were clear and unyielding, pushing Southwest into a corner where change was inevitable. The airline, known for its resistance to change, started implementing policy shifts that reflected Elliot's influence. These changes were not just superficial tweaks, but deep-rooted transformations that would alter the very fabric of the company's operations. The leadership team, once steadfast in their ways, had to adapt quickly to the new reality imposed by Elliot's strategic vision. Cost-cutting measures were introduced and the airline's growth strategy was re-evaluated. This re-evaluation was not a simple task. It involved scrutinizing every aspect of the business, from operational efficiencies to market positioning. The goal was clear, to streamline operations and enhance profitability without compromising the core values that had made Southwest a beloved brand. One of the most significant changes came in the form of share buybacks. This financial maneuver was designed to return value to shareholders, a move that Elliott had been advocating for quite some time. The decision to initiate share buybacks was a bold one, signaling a shift in the company's financial strategy. Elliott had been vocal in its demand for Southwest to return more cash to shareholders, and the airline responded by initiating a massive share repurchase program. This program was not just a gesture of goodwill towards investors, but a calculated move to boost the company's stock price and market perception. However, it also meant diverting funds that could have been used for other strategic investments. This move, while applauded by some investors, raised concerns about whether Southwest was prioritizing short-term gains over long-term sustainability. Critics argued that the focus on immediate financial returns could undermine the airline's ability to invest in future growth and innovation. The debate over the merits of share buybacks versus reinvestment in the business became a hot topic among industry analysts. Elliott also pushed Southwest to optimize its route network, arguing that the airline could improve profitability by focusing on more lucrative routes. This optimization process involved a detailed analysis of route performance, passenger demand, and competitive dynamics. The goal was to identify and prioritize routes that offered the highest potential for revenue and profitability. This resulted in Southwest trimming some underperforming routes and adding new ones to its network. The changes were not made lightly. Each decision was backed by data and strategic considerations. The airline aimed to strike a balance between maintaining its extensive network and enhancing its financial performance. The move, while strategically sound, was met with mixed reactions from customers loyal to the discontinued routes. Some passengers felt abandoned, while others appreciated the improved service on the new routes. The challenge for Southwest was to manage customer expectations and maintain its reputation for exceptional service. These policy shifts, while seemingly minor on the surface, represented a significant departure from Southwest's traditional approach. The airline, which had built its brand on a foundation of customer-centric policies and employee satisfaction, was now navigating uncharted waters. The leadership team had to ensure that the changes did not erode the company's core values. The airline, once known for its unwavering commitment to its employees and its customers, was now navigating a delicate balancing act, trying to appease both Elliott and its stakeholders. This balancing act required careful planning and execution, as any misstep could have far-reaching consequences for the company's reputation and financial health. Do you believe that Southwest's decision to implement share buybacks was in the best interest of the company's long-term health? The question remains open-ended, inviting viewers to consider the complexities and trade-offs involved in such strategic decisions. As Southwest continues to navigate Elliott's turbulence, 
Only time will tell if these changes will lead to sustained success or unforeseen challenges. After months of public sparring, rumors of a potential settlement between Southwest Airlines and Elliott Management began to surface. The tension between the two had been palpable, with both sides engaging in a very public and often contentious battle over the future direction of the airline. The details, shrouded in secrecy, hinted at a truce that would see Elliott ease its pressure in exchange for certain concessions from Southwest. These concessions were speculated to include board seats and a say in strategic decisions, which could significantly alter the airline's trajectory. While the exact terms of the settlement remained confidential, it was widely speculated that Elliott had secured significant influence over Southwest's board of directors. This influence could manifest in various ways, from pushing for cost-cutting measures to advocating for new routes and services that align with Elliott's vision for profitability. This would give Elliott a voice in key decisions, ensuring that the airline strategy remained aligned with its vision. The presence of Elliott on the board could lead to a more aggressive approach to growth and profitability, potentially shaking up the airline's traditional business model. The potential settlement, while signaling an end to the public feud, left many questions unanswered. Stakeholders